of Hollywood, the Red Skelton Show. Brought to you by Johnson's Wax, makers of all new Coco, the lasting shine for homes with active families. Red Skelton Show with David Rose and his orchestra and Red's guest star, Edward Everett Horton. Now, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, Red Skelton. They're applauding sort of like uh, they're, they're applauding like they're sort of happy that I'm leaving the state tonight. <laughs> I'm going to Florida. See, I'm going down to Florida. And we got a tele telegram for you, Mr. Skelton. 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 This is that Texan I was telling you. A telegram? Yeah. Where from, sir? Western Union. Yeah. <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> Mr. Hilton. Now, that show you how you can get excited reading lines. You know, you get everything mixed up. Lub, glub, lub, scub, lub, lub, scub, lub, lub. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's thrilled about your planning to telecast from Miami Beach. You're opening at the Fountain Blue on the 20th. I'm opening at Fountain Blue Hotel down in Florida. Uh, it should make one of the merriest seasons. The weatherman has promised the warmest cooperation. Uh, here's, here's, see, I knew this was coming, see, but here's where this guy made a mistake, see. <laughs> this guy, his name is, uh, uh, Meyer. <laughs> Meyer is his name, yeah. <laughs> Hank Meyer, see. He said, don't worry, we will take care of all of the excess weight on the plane. <clears throat> so bring your bathing suit. <laughs> your golf truck, tennis racket, water ski. <laughs> Oh, that silly boy. He didn't think I was going to carry that stuff myself. That stuff myself. <laughs> he didn't think I was going to carry that stuff myself. That's good. Well, we're all excited. We're excited around here. But I am going down to the Fountain Blue Hotel. And that's in Miami Beach, Florida. And it's really... Have you ever seen that place? This is the biggest hotel in the world. Believe me. This is the first hotel that I've ever seen. I played town smaller. <laughs> From your bed to the bathroom, they got Burma shave signs. <laughs> when you want a bellboy, you send up a flare, you know? <laughs> and you don't tip, you buy annuities. <laughs> and, on the, and on the towels, being a southern state, see, they don't, they don't have towels marked his and hers. They have one big towel marked you all. <laughs> going down to Cape Canaveral, I thought maybe I'd, I'd give you a report on what's happening to your money going up. And, uh, well, I'm down there. I, mean, I have a little plan where we're going to send up Cape Canaveral itself, you know. <laughs> have you noticed since the rockets have become the vogue now, I mean, everybody trying to, uh, uh, to uh, get a rocket in the air, now they got them to talk back, you see. I, any day now, we'll send one up as it goes over other uh, countries every half hour. It says, you need any money? Need any money? <laughs> But uh, uh, how it's affected children. I'd like to do a short pantomime now about an old man and a little boy. And, uh, well, you'll figure it out yourself because uh, Art's going to narrate it for us. Once upon a time, there was a little old man. <laughs> and a little boy. It was the little boy's birthday, and the little old man brought him a present. It's just what the little boy wanted, a chemistry set. <laughs> the little old man tells him he can make all sorts of wonderful things with that chemistry set, like, like disappearing ink. And so... Even a piece of chalk. <laughs> what the little boy really wants to do is to make an atomic rocket. <laughs> of course, now, he can't do that with a little old man around, so he waits until Grandpa takes his afternoon nap. Thank <laughs> you. 
little boy is on his own. kind of liquid fuel. That's what they use in rockets. And Grandpa has some liquid fuel that gets him pretty high. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grandpa is waking up from his nap. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. He's very proud. He's the very first boy on his block to put his grandpa into orbit. I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Boy, that smog's getting worse every day. <laughs> well, that's not the peas, it's the smog. <laughs> I'll forge myself tonight. Beans. Oh, I love beans. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's three. 
One of them's moving. <laughs> For everybody out now. Oh, an egg, an egg. Now, why would anyone throw an egg away? It says, oh, it must be a brand name. It says McCoyan. <laughs> International Airport, 1959. <laughs> now, why would it? <laughs> Personality, all right. <laughs> Well, not exactly, no. <laughs> I mean, both. They're after me. They want to steal my invention. Well, they're after me, too, but it ain't for an invention. <laughs> You're an inventor? The world's greatest. No, please. Professor Phineas T. Munson. Munson? Yes. No. Well, what is it? In here is a secret that will revolutionize the world. No kidding. What is it? Shh. You've invented a shh. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. They've already got them. Every hospital in the country's got them. I even know one old radio station that still has them. We mustn't let them catch me and steal my invention. No, we mustn't let them catch me. Please, guard it with your life. I will. Whatever you do, do not look inside and yes. do not open the box. Oh, I will do that, sir. Oh. <laughs> I call a nervous man. <coughs> Sounds like somebody else is coming now. Excuse me. Yes. You have seen a man come running through here? Oh, is a man about this tall? Yes. Does he have on a brown hat? Yes. With horn rim glasses? Yes. And, and he talk kind of funny once in a while? Yes. Yeah. Nervous like? Yes. 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 Uh, he had a big black box? Yes. Yes. Where is he? I haven't seen him. How does he smell fishy here? Naturally, this month has R in it. <laughs> this month knows nothing. Come They all seem to want this little black box all of a sudden. I wonder what could be in it. Oh, I better not open it. I'll just take a peek. No, I better not either. I'll just pretend it's not there. That's what I'll do. Oh, I wonder what it is, Bill. Oh, gee, if I could just say what I did at rehearsal. <laughs> Of a mortal sin. 
Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that pretty? Where did you read that? On a dressing room door down at the burlesque theater. <laughs> What are you doing here, anyhow? As a matter of fact, Betty, I came over to see if I could spend the night here. Yeah, yeah. Spend the my night? My place, yes. My place is being redecorated. Redecorated? Oh, yeah. Well, la di da Oh, no, I mean it, really. I mean it, yes. They're redecorating my apartment. They are, really? Yes. You mean they're finally going to paint that smart bench, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, well... Betty, I found out the hard way. You did, yes. Barnett? Good. <laughs> I see you've earned your stripes. <laughs> Here. You certainly can. You certainly can. Here. You can sleep in the Murphy bed. In the Murphy bed? Yes. I sleep here, and your bed is in the wall here, the Murphy bed. Here, we get this right now. There you go. <laughs> Watson had that box with him before he reached that hobo's shack. But he did not have it with him after he left. So he must have given it to that bum. Yeah. Tanya! Yes? Tanya, there is a certain hobo who has in his possession the invention we are after for our country. It is your job to get it from him. Do you think you can do it? Do I think I can do it? <laughs> I perfectly opened it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, go back to sleep and dream what was in it. <laughs> you ain't tricking me. I'm, I'm sorry. You're not getting in there. I promised the inventor I would not open it. That's the way you feel about That's it? That's the way I feel about it, sir. Very well, in that case, see you on the campus. Uh, the campus? <laughs> oh, I thought he would never go. I thumb. I smell blood of an Englishman. <laughs> I see him right now. Yes, sir, there you are. <laughs> well, there's one thing that'll keep him away is water. <laughs> Good heavens, I smiked up the sky back there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a peek in here and just take one look. I promised I wouldn't look, so I'll just feel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's got a zipper on it. Hmm. It worked. <laughs> uh, come in. Yeah. Oh, how do you do, sir? Sir, I'm working my way through college, and I was wondering... With a long black beard like that? <laughs> I'm not a very good student. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, as I thought. Now, where did you get the phony beard? Well, I picked it up off of the Beverly Hills trash pile. I think it's one of Jack Benny's old toupees. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Benny don't wear a toupee. He's not stingy either, but it gets a laugh. Uh, <laughs> out, out, away from there. Away from there. Here, take this phony disguise with you. Now, out, out, out. Mr. Alfred, boy, he's really, I tell you, dying to see what's in here. There's nothing worse than being nosy, as one uh, <clears throat> fellow said to the other.
Hello. Oh. <laughs> yes, you're Alfred. Say, hey, Alfred, what a disguise. Dean Mansfield must have thrown away a few things on that trash pile, too. <laughs> oh, Jimmy boy, my name is Sonia. Sonia? And uh, you have something that I want. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that works both ways, ladies. <laughs> Mr. Mountain, he gave you a little box, yes. and now he wants you to give it to me. Oh, now, just a moment. I hardly know you. How do I know I can trust you? You're a, free, it's a, a stranger. I, I, you're a stranger. You don't trust me. I don't. Well. What's the matter? <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now do you trust me? Yeah, but I don't trust myself. <laughs> well, that's pretty good acting on my part, by the way. <laughs> I just saved us all from blowing Boston. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in jail in two minutes. You know? Oh, I know what the trouble is. What is the trouble? Well, well the, the matter with you is that you don't want to give that box to anyone but Mr. Munson. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's the idea. And <laughs> I have an idea. Uh, this is the address of my hotel. Oh, what a handy little briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good heavens, that's still warm. <laughs> I think you gave me the wrong one. It says Playtex. <laughs> you mean it upside down? Oh, upside down. Oh, it's more. Oh, yeah. Tonight we could come to dinner. Dinner? Yes, we would have all soft lights and sweet music. For dinner? And and Mr. Munson would be there. Who needs Mr. Munson? <laughs> oh, and, and of course we would have something to drink. Oh, yes? Uh, shall we stay seven? Oh, well, you can try seven. I usually conk out after the third or fourth. <laughs> See you later. You know what holds that dress up, don't you? A city ordinance. <laughs> well, skip the gutter. Swap the sewer. <laughs> Remember, Tanya, when that hobo gets here, we must get that box from him. Gottfried and I must remain hidden. If he identifies us, we will be of no use to Yugo Banya. Oh, don't worry. Leave everything to me. You let him in. We will hide. Oh, oh. Fred. How are you, my dear? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Oh, nice place you got here. Well, thank you. Oh, yes. A light? A oh, light. Oh, yes. I've got a light here for you. Just a minute. I... <laughs> <laughs> Take your thing. Help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, where's Mr. Munson? Well, he's not here yet, but let us go to the window and we should look out and watch for him. Oh, well, be my guest. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> you see the view? It is no, lovely. No, I saw the breeze, though. Oh, I'll have to look out through my minicle here. My minicle. Where's my... Oh, my <laughs> it's funny that window's closed, but I keep feeling a draft. I better put this box down. It's getting heavy. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Say, that screen, wasn't that just against the, the wall over there? Oh, see, darling, that is your imagination. Now, imagine. you sit down, and I will get you something to drink. All right, we'll do that. There's somebody behind that screen. I'm going to find out who it is. <laughs> you know, there's nobody behind that door, but he just hit me. Where did he hit you? Right up here. He's right. That's the place. <laughs> there's somebody behind that screen. I'm going to find out. Who <laughs> Get 
Johnson. We've been after these spies for a long time. Okay, let's go. <coughs> you too, fella. <laughs> Mr. Munson, the inventor, how are you? Well, I'm not an inventor. Oh? U.S. government. So am I. War surplus. <laughs> and the story of this little box is it's a red herring we used to smoke out the spies. A red herring? Now, okay. Well, how about that? <laughs> a red herring. Now I've got something for dinner. And it assures me a seat on the bus, too. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the makers of Johnson's Wax, may I thank you for making our visit possible. I'll see you all down in Miami Beach, Florida, at the Fountain Blue Hotel. And next week, we'll be brought to you by all of the sponsors, the makers of Pet Milk. And don't forget this uh, January the 24th issue of TV Guide. And thanks for your kindness. Good night. May God bless. <laughs>